a great honor to be here. This was the — thank you. So many of those beautiful hats. Do we love those hats? Remember, you have to win the great state of Ohio. And did we win the great state of Ohio by it? And I always say — I always say this. How are we doing now compared to the election? And so far, the answer has always been better or much better, every place. So we're doing great. And uh, we just had a couple of meetings with some of the folks. And I'll tell you what, we have great, great people in this state. This is a very, very special place. And this is a little bit of a business roundtable today. We're going to be talking with uh, Secretary Alex Acosta, Congressman Jim Renacci, who's, as you know, running for the Senate. We need his vote very badly. He'll be fantastic. I've known him for a long time. I've known Jim for a long time, and he agrees with what we're doing, and he agrees. So you look at the steel plants, and steel mills are starting to open again. I just left the President of United States Steel, and he said it's incredible what's happening. And, you know, we did a thing called tariffs, and we did it on steel and aluminum, and we're doing a lot of other things. My group just got back from China. We're going to have to rework trade with China, because that's been a one-way street for decades, and we just can't have it happen. And so we'll do that. And we have a lot of respect for President Xi, and we have a lot of respect for China. But uh, it can't go on that way, and uh, that'll all work out. We're doing very well on, as you know, North Korea. We'll see what happens. But we have a meeting set up. We have the location all done. We have the time and place all finished now. We have the date. And so I think that'll be something very special. If you remember, we were into that. Others from the administration uh, were saying that's going to be the toughest problem. And certainly, it's a problem. There are many problems, and we'll get them solved. Uh, we had — we broke 4 percent yesterday. You saw that first time in uh, — well, you know, there are two ways of saying it. You could say first time in 20 years or first time in this century. And <laughs> doing great from that standpoint. And we want to get — we want to get our workers back. We want to get our — we want to make our product here. We want to make our uh, — everything here. We — this is America first now, folks. This is now America first. It's enough. What we've been doing for the last long period of time — long period of time. That's, uh, thank you. We have uh, Make America Great Again. We have America First. You can choose whichever one you want, or you can choose both. I, I really want to choose both. But the choice is America First, because we really have and, — and by the way, other countries, they put themselves first. OK? I'm not saying — you know, we've had where we talked about America. Well, the fact is, we want to be first. We're going to make our country great. And you know what? People from other countries, they're going to do what they have to do. But we're going to bring it to a level playing field right now. You look at our trade deficits with every country, virtually. I mean, I don't even have to ask. I don't have to go around, how are we doing with this country or that country? For the most part, almost every time, we're doing badly. We have deficits with everybody. And don't let anyone ever tell you that trade deficits are OK. They're not OK. They're not OK. We have massive trade deficits with China. We have massive trade deficits with Mexico. Who would think? A hundred billion dollar trade deficit with Mexico. Who would even think that? And that doesn't include lots of other problems. You see that on the border. I really thought they'd be much tougher and better to us on the caravan. Didn't quite work out, but that's okay. That's okay. It's going to end up working out. Our borders are and our laws are a mess. Our immigration laws are a disgrace. And Mexico has some of the toughest immigration laws in the world can't just go into Mexico. But they allow these people to come up through Mexico and come into our country. And they know that our laws are so weak that once they get up there, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. You've seen catch and release. You catch them, and then you release them. OK? <laughs> That's what it is. Catch — this is a Democrat rule. Sherrod Brown. This is a Democrat rule. Catch and release. You catch them, you release them. And, and just to show how ridiculous, we have judges. We have thousands of judges. Do you think other countries have judges? We give them, like, trials. That's the good news. The bad news is 
they never show up for the trial. Okay? So they, they release them, and they have a trial, and it's supposed to take place in a year. A year. Not the following day. But that's okay. There's only one problem. Nobody ever shows up. They're in the country. Welcome to the United States. And these are the laws that we're suffering with. These are, this is why you'll see, and the wall we have to build. How about the wall where everyone scales the wall? Now, we are fixing and building walls now, but we need much more money. We're doing the job, right? We're going to do the job. And we may have to close up our country to get this straight, because we either have a country or we don't. And you can't allow people to pour into our country the way they're doing. You just take a look at that mess that's on television right now. It is a total catastrophe. And these are the laws passed by Democrats so that we have open borders. They want open borders. We have to have borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. So we're going to have one. So step by step. So step by step. We've made a lot of progress, and uh, we're going to be making a lot of progress in that, too. And we have actually, uh, you know, it's very interesting, in San Diego, they wanted a wall built. We have the money to build a wall. We are actually, you know, we got $1.6 billion for fixing and building. But in San Diego, California, where we have a lot of problem. You know, we have a governor that's not cooperative, uh, wants to have, you know, between sanctuary cities and let people come in with open borders and everything else. It's not easy for our Border Patrol people. It's not easy for our ICE people. How about the mayor of Oakland, where she notifies them that ICE will be coming, so everybody splits up. And this was a well-orchestrated situation. She notifies them that ICE will be coming and everybody splits up. So all of that work and all of that everything to do what they had to do, it turned out to be a big bust. It's very, very sad. And let me tell you, that's called obstruction of justice. You want to know? That is called total obstruction of justice. So we're getting it straightened out. It will be straightened out soon. Uh, we passed the biggest tax. If you look, I mean, you take a look at the the tax, I call it the tax cut plan. You know, they wanted to call it the tax reform plan. I say, how come since Reagan, nothing has passed having to do with tax cuts? How can, and being a non-politician, I'd say, how is it possible not to be able to pass tax cuts? They said, well, it hasn't happened since Ronald Reagan, anywhere near what we're doing. But essentially, tax cuts, even at a small level. I said, I don't understand. You're going to reduce taxes for people, and you can't get votes? They say, no, sir. I say, huh, I can't figure it out. Then I found out they don't call it tax cuts. They've called it tax reform. Well, tax reform might mean your taxes go way up. It could mean a lot of bad things. So I said, here's what we'll do. We're going to call this plan the tax cut plan. <laughs> tax cut, C-U-T, tax cut. We're going to cut taxes. We're not going to reform. We're going to reform, too. But we're not going to reform. We're going to cut taxes. So I was, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe because I looked and I studied like four or five attempts and they failed miserably. So they called me up and they want to know, sir, what's the official name you'd like on the bill? I want it to be called, this is true, they didn't want to do it, they thought it was a little hokey and I think they were right, but I wanted to be called the tax cut, 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 cut plan. I actually did. I would have put it in. I would have put it in. You know that, Charlie? And they said, that's a little, you know, in front of the United States guy. I said, I said, all right. So we'll call it the Tax Cut and Jobs Plan. And we did that, and we got it passed. And it's the first time, the biggest in our history. And the stock market, since the election, the stock market is up almost 35 percent. Think of that, almost 35 percent. And honestly, and companies are doing even better than that. Companies are doing better. They are ready to just do numbers that you've never seen before. And we do need people coming into our country. You know, at 3.9 percent unemployment, we need people coming in. But I will tell you this, we want people to come in to our country on the basis of merit, not picked out of a — So we're working on merit systems, because we need people to help. You know, we have up in Wisconsin, we have Foxconn coming in. That's a friend of mine. 
They make many of the Apple iPhones and Apple equipment. And I said to Tim Cook, who's now investing $350 billion Apple, and they're bringing much of it in from foreign lands, from overseas. They're bringing it in because of our new tax plan, because it gave them the incentive to bring money. So these big companies are bringing the money back, and they're investing it in the United States. Tim Cook is bringing $230 billion back from overseas, money you would have never seen. And Apple's spending $350 billion on new plants and a campus. So it's great. It's great. So we have a lot of things happening. And in Ohio, you know what's going on. The auto companies are starting to come back. They're starting to expand. I had — I was so nice. I was greeted at the airport by great people. And some of them were coal miners. And one of them said they're dressed in beautiful — actually, a black shirt. I said, give me one of those. I want to wear it if I ever play golf. I'll wear that shirt. It's beautiful. <laughs> It was beautiful, actually. But they're proud. And there were four of them. And they were standing. They greeted me off the airplane. There were a lot of people waiting at the airplane. And I went over. They said, sir, we're coal miners. And since the day you got elected, we've been filling up the trains. I said, what do you do? He said, we load trains. I said, well, that's a good description. I mean, I don't need better than that. That says it all. He said, we load trains. And from the day you got elected, we've been loading trains. Before that, I said, how was it? They said, not good. There wasn't too many trains to be loaded. But he said, I haven't had a day off since the day you got elected. And that's happening. And it's going to be happening even more so. So when it's all together and when everything is really set and it's really going well, it's going much better than people even understand. Our military, we got $700 billion. I didn't like having to do this last budget because there's a lot of things that the Democrats put in that I hate. But I had to get money for our military. Our military was depleted. We weren't getting the new equipment. You will see the same stories that I do. And we needed help. And I got $700 billion, and then I got $716 billion. And remember, that equipment is all made here. It's made in the United States. We make the greatest missile systems, the greatest planes. We make the greatest military equipment and a lot of other equipment, including commercial planes. But we make the greatest military equipment in the world. You got to see that recently when you saw what we did in Syria, where they said, oh, we shot down 40 missiles. I don't think so. I called up. I said, how many were shot down? None. None. Stealth missiles. It's called stealth missiles. And every single one. We shot in 109, and we had 109 hit their target. And by the way, France and the U.K. was great. They helped us. They were — they were with us all the way, and we appreciate that. But we make the greatest equipment in the world. But we had to fix our military. We also wanted something that has a tremendous impact on Ohio is the opioid disaster. Drugs generally. But the opioid, we got $6 billion for opioid prevention and work and rehab, and we need help. We need help. And we're very, very tough. One of the reasons we want the strong border is a lot of this stuff comes in from different places, but it comes in from Mexico. It comes along the southern border. And we're stopping it. We're making it much tougher. But we can't do that unless Congress gives us the tools that we need. We have to get rid of catch and release. We need strong, strong tools. We don't want the lottery system. We want a merit system. Can you imagine a lottery system? Can you imagine that? We take people based out of a lottery. A lottery. You think the country is putting their finest in the lottery? I don't think so. I don't think so, all right? Think about that. And, you know, the problem is that these beliefs are so deep-seated in the Democrats, like a Sherrod Brown. They're so — I mean, you have to — we need the votes. Jim will be fantastic. You're not a big lottery uh, system man, are you? Good. Okay. Otherwise, I'd have to take away my advice. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd say, Jim, I can no longer endorse you, Jim. No, we want a merit — we want a merit system where they come in based on merit. So we're going to get a lot of things done. We have a lot of great people running. I think we're going to do very well in the midterms. The poll numbers are, you know, pretty good. The, the question is whether or not — they actually say that I'm popular. Can you believe it? Of course, the fake news doesn't say that. The fake news. No, they, they, it's been — you know, we've been doing very well. We just had a poll, 51 or 52, uh, which came out 
you know, very nicely. And then I turn on, uh, like, you know, one of the networks, and I see Donald Trump, who's not very popular. I'm saying, what, am, what are you talking about? In fact, you saw the poll came out that I'm above Obama. Uh, above Obama. And then, no, but then you turn to the fake news, and they go, Donald Trump, who's not very popular. And I'm saying to myself, how did they get away with it? You know, I'm not saying, hey, it's going good. We're doing well. It's, it actually amazes me when you can be at 51 or 52 on a poll that was very, this is Rasmussen, it was very accurate for the election, one of the more accurate polls for the election. And you're in that category, and you get nothing but bad publicity. I mean, I get nothing but bad publicity. I say, how is it possible that I can do that? Now, it's fake publicity. And some of the, you know, some of the, I have to tell you, there's some great professionals, too, in that world. You know, I don't want to make it like everybody. But the, the amazing thing is that the people are smart. They get it. You see the jobs. Now you have choice, too. Just like we're getting the veterans' choice. We're going to have that very soon, by the way. You're going to have choice of jobs. Of jobs. You know, people, people would have one job, and they were petrified to leave that job. They didn't want to leave that job because they didn't think, you know, they were, you know, working at things. You got to love what you do. You're not going to be good at it. You got to love it. And now you're going to have choice because there are a lot of jobs. We have a lot of job openings. And, and people that weren't hiring for years and years and years, all of a sudden, we have jobs. And, you know, one of the folks that my people were so impressed with is on my left is Charlene. And I'd like to ask some of the people up here to just talk a little bit about what the tax cuts have meant, because the tax cuts have helped so many people in such a big way. And Charlene, do you think I could uh, start by maybe asking you to say a few words? Sure. Huh? Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Go ahead. Well, Mr. President, it's a privilege and an honor to be here today. Thank you. My name is Charlene Thornton, and I'm originally from Maine, and I moved out here to the Ohio Valley in 2002. Uh, the reason I'm here is because I wrote a letter to you, and I didn't really think it was going to be read, but it was. Um, they're listening. So, and the subject of my letter was to let you know that this tax cut and jobs plan was affecting us positively. Uh, we also wanted to let you know that we were here supporting you. Thank um, you. My husband, Kevin, was, uh, he worked in a steel mill, and it closed down in 2012 due to the company going bankrupt. So he was then, um, there were a lot of people who actually lost their jobs at that time. Our whole area was saturated with unemployed. And then he spent the next one and a half years retraining and then at the same time searching for a job. Uh, fortunately, I was employed for one of those years, the first year of it. Um, I then became legally blind and could no longer work couldn't drive, mm. and we have no transportation public in our area. Um, also, at, so essentially what happened was we fell in such hard times that um, we had to have a surrender car to be repossessed. We almost lost our home, and then we struggled every day to make ends meet. Um, we basically lived off of my credit cards and both of our unemployment, which still wasn't enough to mm -hmm. cover. Uh, finally, he found a job January of 2014. He's still with them. Uh, but because of the tax cut and the job plan, they're taking out a lot less taxes than what they had been prior to before. Right. We have actually seen in several checks two to three hundred dollars less taxes than what they did before yeah. the plan. real numbers. I actually went back and looked at his income and the taxes before and after, and I was amazed. So it really is working. Um, so I do want to thank you, Mr. Thank President, you, for making our lives a lot less more enjoyable. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. This is my husband, Kevin. Hi. Kevin, would you like to say something? Yes, sir. Thank you. First of all, thank, thank you, Mr. President, thank for you. inviting us, to giving us the opportunity to tell you our story. 
I've been a lifelong resident of Hubbard, a small city just northeast of Youngstown. And in 2000, I started working for what would be known as R.G. Steele and stayed there until its closing in June of 2012. They told us all to go home. The mill had gone, gone into bankruptcy. 50 days later, the mill was sold for scrap. Mm. All of us that worked there, we loved that place. We really did. And we were all deeply impacted. There were 700 of us. And we all lost our jobs. I was out of work, as she had said, for a year and a half. And there was a brief period in time where we went with no income at all, no paycheck, nothing coming into the house. But thankfully, thankfully, in January of 2014, I found employment with the current company I'm working with. And it's a great company, too, with great people and room for us to all expand and grow. I had to drive an hour and a half, though, to one of their facilities. And I did that for three years until I recently I was able to relocate to a facility closer to home. And that took off a burden for me. The company I'm employed with has been seeing huge amounts of demand for their product. They have this tax cut that we're having is enabling them to purchase new machinery, open up buildings they previously had closed, and to hire more people. And I didn't think that I would ever be able to say this in my life, uh, but I think I can now. At this rate, I think I'll be able to be gainfully employed until my retirement. Good. Good. I've been hearing that uh, from steel companies, and uh, in particular from U.S. Steel, uh, where I was with the president, as I said, and uh, he — they're just talking about opening plants now, and so many things have changed, and that's because of our stance, and uh, also on the tariffs, the 25 percent tariff on steel, 10 percent on aluminum. Plus, it gives us the right now. Other countries want to negotiate with us because of it, and you're seeing things happening. Uh, Again, we're going to take care of our people. We've been taking care of a lot of the world, and they never appreciated it. A lot of this world never appreciated what we do. We fight wars for them, and we fight all sorts of things, and then they take advantage of us on trade on top of everything else. So we're going to keep a lot of friends, but they're going to respect us again. And they've started to respect us again, and that makes me feel very good. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you for having us here today, and I'm truly honored. I'm Sherry Sheely, COO of Sheely's Furniture and Appliance, and we are located in North Lima, Ohio, just south of Youngstown. We've been in business for 66 years. We're family-owned and operated, second generation. We have 148 awesome employees. Several are here today. And we do an annual sales volume of $34 million. It's because of the dedication and hard work of our employees that Sheely's earned the number one independent furniture retailer of America Whoa. award a few wow. years ago. Thank you. I'd like to recognize my husband, Dale Sheely, sitting here in the front row. He is our president. It was his father who started the company in 1952 with a pickup truck and a hot water heater. I mean, Sheely's Furniture, I believe, is truly the American dream success story. And I have to say that immediately upon your election, which Dale and I were more relieved than you can even imagine, Thank you. <laughs> we chose to move forward with an addition to our showroom. We had contemplated that for about seven or eight years, didn't feel it was the right time, but we felt with your strong leadership that now was the time to reinvest in our company. So in the next two weeks, we're going to be opening our new Bargain Bonus Center, and everybody great. at the store is very excited. That's great. So thank you very That's much great. for thank that. You. Great. Thank you. And then we were more excited when your tax cut bill right. passed in December. And at that time, Dale and I wanted to reward all of our employees. We decided to wait a few months. It would be a surprise. So in March of this year, we awarded all of our full-time employees a $1,000 bonus, and we gave all of our part-time employees and we gave all of our 
part-time employees a $500 bonus. Great. And I must say, Mr. President, they were so excited, it was totally unexpected. We had several employees who got so emotional they cried. Um, just Thursday, one of our delivery drivers came into my office and said, Sherry, I have to tell you, I thank you again for my $1,000 bonus. I was going to use it to do repairs this summer, but I chose to do something different. And he said, I just put a $1,000 down payment on a vacation I'm taking my family on this summer. That's good. So that means a lot to Dale and I. That's great. Thank you, Sherry. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Say hello to that gentleman. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. I do want to thank you for everything you're doing for this country. I want to encourage you to stay the course. And if you ever have any time of any kind of um, discouragement, I want you to realize that there's millions of Americans across this country, like my husband and I, who pray for you, your family, your safety, you. and your success. Sure, great again, and thank you for making America great uh, thank again. Thank you very much. That's good. Thank you, Sarah. And I'd like you to hear from one of our employees. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. President, my name is Chantel Strohacker. I have been with Sheely's for 22 years as a furniture sales associate and designer. I'm also a very proud daughter of a coal miner. Um, my husband, Mark, and I live in Enon Valley, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour north of Pittsburgh, and we have two amazing children. Our daughter, Brittany, is 23. She's a nurse's aide at a local nursing home, and one of your biggest fans, our 17-year-old son, Dylan, who graduates this year. <laughs> when Sherry um, asked if I wanted to come, she knew how much Dylan respected you, and so she did invite him also, so he's very excited to be here. Our health insurance comes through my husband's employer, and before Obamacare, we had no premiums, we had no deductibles. Once Obamacare came into effect, my husband's employer, which is just a small company, was unable to cover the premiums any longer. So we now have very high premiums and also higher deductibles. Last year, we had two medical situations um, involving my son and then later on in the year my husband that required several days in the hospital and my husband actually has more surgeries coming and with the bonus that you made possible we were able to pay down some of our medical bills so I just really want to thank you Mr. President and the Sheelys for making that possible for our family thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. You know, you mentioned Obamacare. It's been a disaster. And we are — we actually had it beaten except for one vote. You remember that beautiful night? It was — it was defeated, but one vote changed. They changed, but one of those things. But we've actually done a great job, because in the tax cut plan, we got rid of the individual mandate, which is the most unpopular part. And now we're going to be doing other things like association uh, health insurance. And we have our great Secretary of Labor who is in charge of that. And I guess over the next few weeks, we're going to have a very, very big announcement on health care. We have a few of them because Alex Azar also is going to be making a big statement. So by the time we do these various plans that we're doing, and they're fantastic for people, and they cost the government relatively little, and maybe I could ask Alex Acosta to say a few words about it, Secretary of Labor. Mr. President, thank you. And, uh, and, 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 and so, you know, the story that you shared with us is a story we've heard from so many Americans. Um, there are 11 million Americans and their families that work for small businesses that can no longer afford health care. And that's a big, big problem, right? And so one of the things that folks don't know is that Obamacare puts a greater burden on small businesses than on corporations. And so the President's vision is, is there a way that small businesses can band together 
so they can just get the same access to health care as the big corporations. So we're working on a proposal to do just that. And the president's very focused on this. All right, and you're listening to Labor Secretary Labor Alex Acosta there talking about very, upcoming very plans of health care. You've been listening to the president and a host of guests Americans there out of Cleveland, Ohio, who have given their own personal accounts of the benefits of uh, the tax cut plan that the president advocated for and went into effect this year. And in that plan, also uh, the elimination of the Obamacare uh, individual mandates. Let's talk a little bit more about all that we've been listening to, uh, in addition to keeping our ears peeled just in case the president uh, has more to talk about, more to add to this discussion about tax cuts and his overall vision uh, of his agenda uh, for this country. Our Polo Sandoval is there in Cleveland. He's outside of the event. Polo, you had mentioned earlier this would not be like a campaign style event that we've been come right. that we've become accustomed to for the president. But uh, this president did use this forum to his advantage to try to underscore some of the accomplishments that he is very proud of that he is boasting of. Absolutely, Fred. And, and do interrupt me if the president resumes his uh, remarks here. But I think what we're seeing here during this short visit to the Buckeye State uh, is, is certainly uh, his attempt here to try to put a face to what he believes is, is a success for his administration, particularly that tax reform legislation that was passed in December. And according to several uh, folks that we just heard from right now inside that venue, is seems to be working. You heard from uh, Charlene Thornton, who says she wrote a letter to the president uh, not expecting a response. And here she is today, uh, one of the people who have been invited to be part of this uh, Roundtable that is discussing uh, several issues, but the main focus here, of course, that tax reform uh, legislation. Uh, you heard her say that she is already uh, feeling those positive effects of that legislation. So it certainly is, it is an opportunity for the president uh, and his supporters, including most of which you'll find inside that auditorium venue right now, uh, writing this uh, or at least taking this uh, victory wrap months later. But it wasn't just about commerce, not just about business here. Uh, the president certainly pivoting to some of the other issues that he has made a sure. big part Actually, of his agenda, Polo, including I hate immigration to reform. Uh, let's listen into the president right now. The borders, they don't want the wall, but we're going to get the wall. Even if we have to think about closing up the country for a while, we're going to get the wall. We have no choice. We have absolutely no choice. And we're going to get tremendous security in our country. But Jim has been there all the way. He's highly respected in Washington, just a respected person, uh, really knows what it is to go out and make a dollar, go out and spend a dollar, understands business, understands what we're doing in the country, and understands what it takes to make America great again. And I give Jim my full support. And Jim, maybe you could say a few words. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I, 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 thank you, and welcome back to Ohio. It's thank really you. great to have you here. You. Uh, the first time I met you, you were candidate, Trump. And uh, I told you I was with you then, and I've been with you every day since. It's true. Um, I appreciate what you're doing. Look, I'm a, I was a small businessman, as many of you know. I created over 1,500 jobs, employed over 3,000 people. So I understand, and I'm still a CPA, and I still have my CPA license, and I understand what this tax law does. So I was so happy when the President said, we're going to cut taxes for Americans. And as I travel the state, I hear that all the time. I hear it from small business owners. I hear it from employees. I'm so happy these, that uh, we're hearing these stories, and I know we're going to hear some more, because as I, I travel the state, it's working. It's working here in Ohio. Everywhere from Key Corp, who lowered uh, or raised their minimum wage because of these tax cuts, to Smuckers, who gave everybody a $1,000 bonus, added money into their pension plan, um, Steris, right up the road, a $1,000 bonus, all these things. But you know, it's just not the big companies either, because the small companies, the little companies are doing just the same thing. Coach Truck and Tractor in Conneaut, just seven people actually gave, seven person business gave bonuses to their employees, small business. We also have the First Federal Community Bank in Dover, $1,000 bonus to full-time employees and 500 to part-time. So it's working. But you know what the greatest story is when I travel the state of Ohio? It's when I walk into a restaurant and somebody walks up to me and says, thank you. Thank you because I got a couple extra hundred dollars in my uh, check last month. And now I can put a little bit more away for college or I can put a little bit more away and pay off my car loan. These are the stories that are working. This is why I'm so proud to be standing here with the, or sitting here with the president and knowing that we together 
were able to put a tax plan together with his vision and get it passed. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you. And I, I have to say, I just looked at the numbers, and Jim's really doing great. He's really got a big shot at doing it. He's been, as I said, he's been a fantastic congressman, and uh, I really suspect you're going to be a even more fantastic senator. So we need your vote. We need your help. So go out and help Jim. We'll get it done. Right? Thank you. Tony, would you say a few words? My turn. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, I want to thank you for inviting us today. Uh, really, truly honored to be here. Uh, All right, as I the president continues to listen to guests there uh, talk about how they have benefited from uh, the president's vision as it pertains to uh, tax cuts uh, and uh, and the job scenario, I want to bring in a CNN political analyst, Nathan Gonzalez, and CNN presidential historian Tim Neftali uh, joining us now. And the president has been weaving back and forth, you know, between uh, tax cuts. Uh, he even touched upon the opioid crisis, and then he has mentioned border walls, immigration uh, a number of times. And, you know, Tim, um, I guess this session is to tout what the president has seen as real accomplishments, but he also seems to be uh, very focused on work yet to be accomplished, particularly as it, become, as it talks about immigration and border control. And, and listening to the president there saying, you know, and we have the quote there, we will build a wall even if we have to close up the country. What does he mean? Well, I think he wants to show strength. Um, I think despite the fact that, that experts on immigration and on the opioid crisis are two different things, but there are over, overlapping issues, uh, have said that building a wall is not going to do much, if anything, to uh, st uh, stop the flow of uh, illegal drugs into the country. He still tries to link that in the minds of Americans. He knows what a big crisis the opioid, opioid uh, challenge is in this country, and so he's, he's desperately trying to link that to the wall and to say somehow that the two uh, are, um, um, should be uh, supported by Congress. Congress doesn't want to support the wall because it understands it's a waste of money. I wanted to make one point, though, about um, uh, how targeted the appeal was today. It's very interesting, very interesting to hear how the tax plan has affected um, Americans. It's good, it's, it's important to hear that. Mm. It's also interesting that nobody talked about wage, wage levels or wages. Everybody talked about a thousand dollar bonus, which was very uh, helpful and much appreciated, no doubt. But I wonder what happened to all their wages. I suspect nothing. So in a year, there won't be another b a bonus. Uh, these companies might be making more money, one would hope they would, but our wage level is going to go up because, in, in effect, the real problem in middle America, and actually most of America, mm -hmm. is that our wages are stagnant and have not really kept up uh, as they should have done in the last 10 years. So, Nathan, what do you see as the objective here um, for this roundtable today? I mean, it's touted as a tax cuts, you know, roundtable. Uh, right. The president is also using this maybe as a listening post. He's hearing from, you know, constituents there who praise, uh, you know, the, the, the tax cuts that they received, the two to three hundred dollars uh, that Ms. Shealy was was talking about and being able to extend the thousand dollar bonuses to some of her employees. But what do you see as the primary objective here? Why is this important for the president? Yeah, Fred, uh, you mentioned this is this wasn't a campaign rally, but I think it was a campaign commercial. I think the objective was to uh, was to sell the tax cut 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 bill or whatever the president keep, wants to call it uh, to sell that to the American people. And in general, I think that Republican strategists and those Republicans that are focused on these midterm elections that are upcoming, they I think they would take this president. I mean, the the president in this environment. Maybe it's that he's sitting down, uh, but he was fairly focused on on the tax bill, and I think that can continues to be something that Republicans are hoping helps them, uh, you know, maybe stem some of the losses come November. And also, I think maybe one of the goals was to help Congressman Renacci, who was seated to his right. Uh, the congressman has a primary on Tuesday against a, 
a uh, another candidate named Mike Gibbons who supported the president as well but uh, Gibbons has never held elective office before he's running as the outsider trying to be uh, capture that uh, that same momentum that President Trump was able to get up to the presidency up to the presidency so I think there were multiple things uh, multiple things at play hmm. and, and then Tim um, the other big picture perhaps this shows some composure uh, you know for the president and even this setting particularly after a, a week of tumult you know within his administration and the feelings that that are being expressed by people who are the front men or women of uh, Donald Trump of the mixed messaging not being on the same accord and perhaps this is a much more controlled setting of, of showing um, a unified message well Fred first of all it's it's a good thing for the president to have other people to have people watching him listen to some other but uh, other people in other mm. words we're we're so accustomed to him um, sermonizing, speaking at us, pontificating, and lately those speeches have been so full of untruths and lies that has really under, undercut his, his credibility. Today we were listening to other people talk to him and he was at least pretending if not actually listening to them. So in that sense it's, it's helpful, it softens the Trump image, but even before he started to listen to um, uh, you know the, the the voters of Ohio, those those chosen voters. He was saying things that were just off the charts wrong. I mean, he was saying that countries select the people that go into the lottery system. That's nonsense. It's individuals around the world who choose to participate in the lottery because they would like to be part of the United States and to live and contribute to our well-being. It's not that some country decides to dump people they don't like in the United States via the lottery system. He should know that. If he doesn't know it, it's a sign of huge ignorance on his part. So the speech he gave before we could listen to what honest, you know, what folks who are living their lives day to day could tell us, what he's, some of his speech was just full of the same hyperbole, um, misinformation, and frankly some lying that unfortunately we've become accustomed to. Uh, in recent months. Mm. And, and uh, Nathan, does this setting, this forum, help short term, you know, Congressman Renacci, who's, who's seeking that Senate seat? And uh, how does this assist the president uh, or even the GOP leading into a midterm election, seeing the president in this kind of venue, this setting, having this listening post? Yeah, it could help. I mean, uh, Congressman Renacci was the front runner going into Tuesday's primary. Uh, it certainly could be uh, an additional boost. But what we've seen in some of the special elections over the last year or so is that the president's uh, coalition or his supporters are not easily transferable to other candidates uh, because the president has such a, uh, he's such a unique person and, and he's a unique aura of, of who he is that it doesn't just you can't just say, oh, uh, Congressman Renacci, I'm with him. He's with me. Go vote for him. It's not quite that simple. Uh, but I, I, I think it's probably a net positive for the congressman. And, and looking ahead, also on Tuesday, there are primaries in, in West Virginia and Indiana with major Senate races where all the Republican candidates are trying to cozy up to the president. Uh, what's interesting that he didn't go to those states that he's, he, that he's in Ohio today. But in general, I think the, the Republicans want and need the president to be focused on selling this tax bill because if uh, Republicans aren't excited and don't show up to vote, mm -hmm. then uh, Republicans are going to lose a significant number of seats. If moderates and independents, if they believe the country's headed in the wrong direction, they're going to elect more Democrats to put a check on the president. Hmm. All right, Nathan, uh, Tim, I want to bring in Ann Zimmerman to the conversation. She's the co-chair of Businesses for Responsible Tax Reform, a national coalition. And so, uh, Ann, is this a, you know, a big feather in the cap of, of the president? Is this uh, this discussion about tax cuts, how helpful it has been for a number of constituents, namely some that you heard from right there in that forum, how helpful, helpful will this be uh, for the president and momentum for his agenda? Thank you, Frederica. Um, I think based on the information we've found that the small business community has been left out of this. And so just selectively waving and showcasing a few people who have received an extra $100 um, doesn't solve the problem for small businesses in this country. We are, we as small businesses, uh, have created two thirds of all the jobs since the recession. 
and this tax cut bill left us behind. It, it absolutely is funneling the big savings and the cuts to the large companies and the wealthy and um, not particularly helpful for us. Well, when you heard from, uh, I think it was Sherry Sheely of uh, the Sheely Appliances there who was, you know, on, on the panel there who said because of these tax cuts, they were able to award $1,000 bonuses. And um, while they consider themselves to be one of the, the largest independent furniture uh, retailers, um, they are on that stage perhaps representative of a smaller business that has been able to benefit from this tax cut? And, and that's wonderful that they were able to do that, but that is not truly representative of us small businesses. The, the um, poll that we did recently did say that 69% of the participants and the respondents would not be able to hire someone new because of the new tax law. So and Anne, another 59% uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Let me, even let me just to ask you to take a moment. Let's listen into the president right now. Also, you know, you have to spend it wisely at the top. But our country is doing great. It's, uh, I think, maybe doing as good or better than it's ever done before. And it's only going to get better. We have tremendous things planned, and we're going to start being uh, smart about our relationship <laughs> with other countries and others. And uh, you're going to see tremendous progress over the next, hopefully, seven years. But it's not even going to take seven years. It's going to go very quickly. It's going to happen really very quickly. Uh, we all love this country. We love it a lot. Those were incredible stories. I really uh, — I think it's just amazing to hear you could we could take almost everybody in the room probably everybody in the room and hear a similar story but i'm very honored to have been able to do the tax cut uh, tax cut plan uh, because it has led to a lot of jobs it has led to better jobs it has led to uh, increased salary but also not only the increase in the salary but you have a lot left over which is money that most people, even the people up here certainly, but probably most of the people in the audience didn't expect to see or have. And it's made a big difference in a lot of lives. We do a lot of these. We meet a lot of people. It's made a tremendous difference. And I am so honored to have been able to help. And we're going to do a lot more over the coming years. So again, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, the president wrapping it up there in Cleveland and making a promise there, saying, you know, our country is is doing great. It can only get better. Tremendous things are planned. So, Ann Zimmerman, as you were saying, these tax cuts have very little incentive for this small business. When you hear the president say, you know, tremendous things planned, what are you hoping and how might it be applicable uh, to small businesses in your view? Yes. Um, Small businesses have been actually more disadvantaged because of the tax cuts. The, joint, the Committee on Joint Taxation uh, just recently this week, I believe it was, came out with some new statistics showing that even of the pass-through piece of this, which is really thought of as the small business piece, even of that piece, 44% of that is going to the small businesses, 200,000 only, that make a million dollars or more in this country. And that isn't the true small business. That's not the small business that's the main street mom and pop store or bakery. They're not able to give raises or bonuses because they're getting very little out of this tax bill. So Tim Naftali is back with me, Nathan Gonzalez uh, as well. Um, so, Tim, uh, um, it seems as though there, at least in that audience, there is a lot of affirmation of what the president was saying. But you listen to Anne, I mean, it's incongruent messaging. She's saying, you know, a lot more needs to be done for it to be a very hopeful scenario for small businesses. And the president has been saying, particularly for small businesses, for the forgotten, you know, uh, people of this land, this is exactly who he's thinking about when proposing uh, and, uh, these tax cut plans? Well, and, and Fred, uh, I think that uh, the president has laid out a challenge today, and we'll see if the Democrats 
uh, can meet that challenge. I mean, after all, there's some very interesting, where we heard some very important personal stories. We heard about a family that works for the Sheely uh, Furniture Company that had to use their entire $1,000 bonus to pay for health care costs because their um, uh, premiums were rising. And so the question we have to ask is, how can we bring premiums down? What was it about Obamacare in Ohio that uh, led to the premiums going up? Was it the insecurity that was created by the fact that the new administration, the Trump administration, made it clear it wasn't going to uh, uh, enforce certain regulations? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that, you know, and that's something the Democrats can talk about, because after all, mm -hmm. it's great that that family got $1,000. Why did they have to spend it on health care? Why couldn't they save it? Or why couldn't they use it for a vacation and, and spread, the, spread the joy to some other part of the United States? So these issues, these are pocketbook uh, issues, cost of health care, mm -hmm. wage rates. Um, and you know what? That's where the debate should be. And that's a debate that's based on fact, because Americans know what they spend. Mm -hmm. Americans know how high their uh, premiums are. So that's great. It's healthy for the country and um, is, is really the, the basis for democracy. So mm -hmm. if the president wants to debate that Americans are better off now because they got a one-time $1,000 bonus and yet their health care premiums are skyrocketing, I'm sure that others will disagree. Mm. And, and then, Nathan, the labor secretary, uh, seemed to intimate that there were upcoming health care plans. So is that the next frontier? Well, I think that's, I mean, Tim absolutely nailed it on the head in terms of the, the fight and the argument and discussion that we're going to see over the next six months. And the Republicans want to talk about uh, the tax uh, the tax cut and jobs bill, but Democrats are, are want people to look at the broader picture and look at health care and look at their premiums and say, when you put all this together, are you coming out ahead? And that's where I think as Republicans realize, well, maybe some what they've done so far on, on health care may not have been uh, enough or been uh, productive. And so do they need to come back and try to fix something or change something? Because when, when voters put all those two together, I don't think Republicans feel like they're on as good a footing coming up to the elections and if people are only focused on uh, that tax tax cut and, and jobs bill. All right, we'll leave it and there I, for now. Oh, okay, go ahead quickly, Tim. If I could add something quickly. Yeah. Uh, have this discussion in soybean land. Uh, have this discussion in parts of the country where tariffs are having a negative effect. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, have it in Steeltown, of course, you're going to see some uh, positive results to tariffs. Somewhere mm -hmm. else, you wouldn't get the same result. All right. So All right. it's we'll not simply, it it, that's part of the story, too. All